Hello everybody, Kixie here, and today I got something very interesting. Uh, this is a frequency transmitter, and so I want to thank uh, Energy Hub Gaming for the idea, because I would have never come up with it. And he commented in one of my videos and basically said, here's a concept, uh, if you want to try it out, I want to see what uh, you come up with. And this is what I came up with. So. What a frequency transmitter is, if you think of a combination lock, a combination lock, uh, I use item frames with the twisting items, they're like dials, and if you think of a combination lock, if you take three item frames with items in them, you have 512 possible combinations, but a combination lock only uses a single one of those combinations to output a redstone signal. And so that is good for certain uses but it is also very wasteful. So if you think of a frequency transmitter, uh, think of all the possible combinations, all 512 of them, and now think of them as potential frequencies. So you have 512 unique frequencies that you could dial into, and each frequency that you dial into has its own unique output, or uh, redstone output, or command block output, whatever you choose, it has its own unique output. So as you can see here, I have, this is my, I call it my frequency key. So this is the key frequency that activates a redstone output. And then this is my frequency transmitter, which you can dial to whatever you want. And if it matches a frequency key, then it will output a redstone signal uh, that is aligned with the key. So as you can see, it is outputting correctly, but if I twist one of these dials, you can see oh, a little bit of a ring, but you can see that it goes negative. And then if I twist this back around to match with the frequency key, you can see it goes back to positive. So I want to give a quick explanation of how this works because it isn't so straightforward. So I'm using a test for blocks command and I'm testing the area of the frequency key and comparing it to the frequency transmitter. So if both of those match, it will output a redstone signal. That sounds pretty straightforward, but the issue is, is you can't actually test for the rotation of an item within an item frame. So that posed a little bit of an issue, but I found out if you put comparators out the back side of it, then they contain a signal strength that is compared to the rotation. Uh, which is a known fact, but the cool thing about this is not only can you compare if a comparator is on or off, or you could test for if a comparator is on or off, you can actually compare and test for the signal strength that is stored within a comparator. So as you can see, these comparators aren't actually outputting, but they have a very specific signal strength which is given to them by the uh, by the items and the item frames. So if you look at all these, these all have a signal strength of one. It doesn't go any further than that. But if I rotate this one right here, now it goes signal strength of one, one, and then two. So this one has a signal strength of two. And then all these are ones. So if I compare them again, you can see it tests negative. But then if I match the signal strength of two on this side and compare them again, you will see a test positive. So uh, as you can see, there's just no redstone coming out the back, but it could still use the comparators to test for the signal strength. So now up here, I have a database of different frequency keys. And then if I match a single one of the frequency keys, it will output a, a command block or a redstone for that unique frequency. So how I do this is I have command blocks here that will test for the frequency that is right next to it or frequency key and then they'll compare it back up to the front to our transmitter and I just have a simple redstone block line that goes across all the top of these command blocks and then a fill air command so it cleans it up real nicely you can see it goes real fast and so that's how I activate them all so now if you're wondering why I stacked them three high all the way down and that is just for compacting it so if I made it where these were all flat 
I would have to make a command block every three blocks because you can see it goes item frame block comparator item frame block comparator and so it just wouldn't be compact so uh, what I'm doing is I'm using a test for block command that test for uh, the first X Y and Z coordinate is set to the item frame and the second X Y Z is set to the back right comparator and then it's the next set of coordinates goes back up here and sets the X, Y, and Z to this item frame and tests for the uh, frequency transmitter. So now I, all I have to do is offset the Y coordinates to too high for the first command block because that selects that one. And then this one is offset by one high so it selects the second one down. And then this one is offset by none which selects the third one down. And then the fourth command block goes back up to two and selects that one. So it's a very nice compact way of doing it. There are a few more compact ways to do them, but I'll have to save that for a later video because it's a lot of work. <laughs> so over here, I have just say commands to say which combination or frequency you are tuned into. And so it's very nice and simple. And now all I do here is for each of the keys, you could set them to whatever you want. And right now, I only have 21 keys actually set. You could go all the way up to 512 if you really wanted to, but that is quite a bit of room to take up. So what I'm doing right now is I just have 21 of the core set of keys, and you could set those to whatever you want. Uh, just make sure that they're all unique frequencies, don't overlap them, or else there may be a few issues, not sure. Uh, so as I as you can see I have my frequency transmitter here and it is currently matching the first frequency and you can see that output a one and so if I dial this into the next one so you can see it matches the next one uh, the comparator is at the one and if I click the button here you can see it now tunes into frequency two and I could do this as much as I want and I could just tune into different frequencies I could even change the tenth place digit and tune into even more frequencies and that's about all I have tuned up to but as you can see it is able to pick out unique frequencies it doesn't overlap it doesn't activate a whole bunch of stuff it only activates one command block at a time so it's very useful and you can put whatever commands you want in here so you could have uh, the way I see this being used is a teleporter. So you could have a teleporter with 512 unique frequencies and you just have those uh, command block outputs a specific coordinate and you could teleport a player to a coordinate. So it's very useful for survival maps or adventure maps and for your own creative worlds. The only issue is this is not, uh, it is not survival friendly whatsoever because it uses quite a bit of command blocks, so uh, sorry, this is not a survival frequency transmitter, but it is very useful in uh, creative if you want, or a adventure map if you're a map maker. And I think that's about it. I also have another uh, project coming up that involves this, but I'm still currently working on it, and as you can see it is a little bit overwhelming uh, it will hopefully be done in a few days not sure exactly when that will be done also i will have a map download so you could download this and import it to your own world the cool thing about this is it uses purely relative commands so you could place this anywhere in your world uh, wherever you want and then as i said these are all in sequential order but you can mix them up you could put a wide uh, gap between each of the frequencies if you wanted and you could just mess around with them and make them and put them in your own world also if you want to uh, expand on this if you want more than 21 frequencies it's pretty easy to understand uh, like I said it's just two on the Y coordinate then one on the Y then zero on the Y and it just repeats that pattern and then you'll have to of course ex uh, extend the uh, the looking point because it goes all the way up here and checks for this one so you can see up here it's a five then a six and then a seven and so on and so forth so if you want to expand on this you can just remember to follow the pattern 
of uh, the 2, 1, 0, and then the pattern of expanding the x coordinate for the, uh, for the uh, comparing area. And also, this will only face east, and on the download map, I think I am going to make one for north, south, east, and west. And so that way you could just copy any direction that you want into your world uh, because it it does change the commands because it changes the order of these commands here. So I will probably do that for the download map, but currently I'll have uh, this, I'll have at least this one up for download. So I think that's about it. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.